welcome back to my YouTube channel, the best place for avant-garde makeup and high-end retouching. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to contour makeup with Photoshop in five simple steps. Sometimes when we photograph our work, it's really annoying to see that the lighting has completely overexposed and washed out all the hard work that we did contouring the makeup. In this video, I'm going to be showing you different Photoshop techniques that you can use in order to enhance the makeup in your portraits. So if you are someone that wants to use light and shadow to take your photos to the next level, then keep on watching. With Photoshop already open, I have this photo right here that I've already edited partially. As this is the third episode in my retouching series, if you want to understand how I edited my skin and color graded the photo, then make sure you check out these two videos that are available on my channel. So that being said, in step one, we want to just create a new layer. Done. Whew. Hard work. Step two, fill this layer with a 50% gray by going to the edit tab, fill, and use the 50% gray. Make sure your blending mode is set to normal and the opacity is set to 100% and these should be the default. Click okay and then change the blending mode of this layer to overlay. This should essentially make your layer invisible. Moving on to step three, duplicate this layer once so now you have two of the same layer. You can rename these layers dodge and burn or highlight and shadow. In step four, we're going to be accentuating all the highlights by using the dodge tool. Keep your range at midtones and adjust the exposure or how intense the tool is to about 30%. I'm constantly adjusting this depending on how intense I want the highlight to be on this area versus that area. And I'm also adjusting the brush size, which you can do so by right clicking or just going up to this point and toggling the bar back and forth. Lighten the areas that are the highest points of the face as if you're using makeup. So these could be your cheekbones, the tip of your nose, this area, your brow bones, your chin, maybe even like your collar bones and maybe a little bit of your neck. I also have darker eyes so I tend to use a dodge tool to lighten them up a little bit so that it really like twinkles. But be careful not to over lighten the eye area, especially the whites of the eyes. What we're trying to achieve here is what looks natural with the original lighting of the photo. In step five, we're gonna be doing something completely similar to step four, except we're gonna be targeting the shadows instead of the highlights. Using the second gray layer, we're going to change the dodge tool to the burn tool, which looks like a hand where the index fingers, it's almost touching the thumb. And you can do this by right clicking on the tool and choosing that icon. Change the range to shadows instead of midtones because now we just want to burn the areas that are naturally darker in the photo. And I like to keep the burn tool down to 10 to 15% and layer up so that we're building and not destroying. I'm burning the areas that will make my face look more angular, such as my cheekbones, my jawline, times I darken the eyeliner. It's safe to say that if you are using highlight in that area, then you probably want to use shadow in the area. For example, this is a highlight, then this is a shadow, then this is a highlight, then this is a shadow, then this is a highlight, then this is a shadow. Oh, 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 and if and if the collarbone's a highlight, then like this is a natural shadow, and if this is a shadow, then maybe this is a highlight. So, you know, like, play with it and you have to have kind of a certain understanding of how lighting works in general. Another cool thing that the burn tool can do is enhance certain colors and so after you've color graded sometimes some of the colors um, that are being picked up as a highlight as well is also really washed out so I would use the burn tool to go to that particular area and I will darken that particular color and it will make it look back to normal to what it actually looks like in real life. this tutorial then please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below on any questions that you may have regarding any of the techniques that I have used I would love to see you tag me in any of the photos I'm on Instagram I'm on TikTok so if you want to use this tutorial to your benefit I would love to see the results of your work and let me know how it goes hit the notification bell stay creative and I will see you in the next one bye One second, my guinea pigs are being annoying. Piggy! Alrighty, back to filming.